Hi everyone, this is Gail and I am in my kitchen because I want to play with my new gel plate or gel press, I should say. Um, it's a brand new product that Fun Stampers Journey is carrying and it's, it's amazing and I just wanted to play a little bit so I thought while I played maybe you guys would like to watch. So I am going to flip my camera so that it uh, is showing my work surface and I hope you don't get too dizzy when I do this but I will be right back with you as soon as I get this done. Okay, I hope you can see that and because of the angle of my camera I'm not going to be able to see what you're seeing so I hope this is in the right place but this is our new gel plate and it's really fun mine's a little green because I was playing with it with some lemongrass ink the other day but color doesn't bother it. It's not going to release that color on anything that I do. And you can see it's it's flexible. It's really nice. Comes in a nice plastic sleeve like this. And you can store it in here if you want. And I'm going to just put that aside. We also have a really nice brayer. Look at this brayer. It is so nice. And it has a little hip on it right here so when you're not using it you can lay it down and not get ink all over your table which is another reason I'm using my kitchen table so I've got that I'm going to be using um, I'm not going to be using cardstock yet I want to play with it a little bit and get my you know practice and try to um, See what you know. Make sure I don't make too an too awful a mess, and I don't want to waste my cardstock. So what I'm using is 35 pound brochure paper that I have had for a long, long time, and this will be a good way to use it up. Now I think I'm going to use our. Um, these are our liquid colors, and of course I had to buy the bundle that you know so they all come together but I think for this one I might use lemon drop and rich coral and let's see I think I'll go with the banana cream just so that it won't turn to mud I've got to learn all my colors but this liquid color is a dye-based ink, or a dye-based color. Uh, it's water-based, so you can, you know, it, it will wash off with soap and water. And what I'm going to do, excuse me, is I'm going to put some of, this is the lemon drop, and I'll put some, just kind of put it around here. It doesn't really matter. I know I'm being a little symmetrical, but it doesn't really matter. And then I'm going to use the banana cream, which is going to be a much lighter yellow. Although it all looks kind of orange on here, doesn't it? And then I'll use rich coral. And of course, this is going to have a lot more red in it. I'm just going to put drops of it on here in no particular place. And then we're going to roll it with the brayer. Now, um, you can just take your brayer and roll it, or you can kind of roll it in little sections, which is what I think I'm going to do. But there's our color. So what looked orange a little while ago is now going to be a real pretty yellow. And 
and you'll notice this is kind of beating up on my on my gel plate and it's because I haven't used this side. I used the other side the other day and it takes a little while for it to kind of get prepped but I'm going to take the brayer and I'm going to roll it on my paper. And then I'm going to take, let's see, what will I do first? I think maybe I will use a stencil first and I will use Let's see, I think I will use this heart one. This is called Heart Wall. And this gel plate is eight and a half by 11. And Fun Stamper's Journey is the only company, the only people that have this particular size. I'm just going to roll this lightly, and I'm going to put a clean piece of paper over top of this, and just see what we've got. Now you can roll this with your brayer if you like, because the back side doesn't really matter what it looks like. That'll give you a good even pressure all over. You just want to make sure that all of your paper is in touch, in contact. And then let me see what we have. Okay, so there's our hearts from the stencil. That's interesting. And I'll put that aside. But we've also got get another piece of paper. Let me just move this one. We have another opportunity because we also have ink that's going to be on the back of the stencil. So we can take this and put it on a piece of paper. I hope you can see this. And then you just pick it up. And you have another, it's sort of the reverse of this one. See, this one is white with the red hearts. This one is red with the white hearts. But we're not finished yet. Ooh, I laid this down. I hope I didn't mess it up. Because you've still got ink left on your gel press. So let's put another clean piece of paper down here on the gel press. Now this is three different prints we're getting from one inking of the gel press. And this should pretty much clean off the gel press. So there's this one that came directly off the gel press. So this is what was left over after the other two. So it just shows you that, you know, the opportunities are endless. Now, what I want to do, well, I don't know. I can't, probably wouldn't do it with these hearts. But let me show you the three. This is the one we just did. Let me put my acrylic sheet on this, if I can find it, the only thing about clear sheets, I'll just lay this down. But this is the one that we pulled, the third one we pulled, this is the second one we pulled, and this is the first one we pulled. Now all of these, you could use them the way they are, and you could cut them into a2 sizes and use them for backgrounds or you can add to them and that's the part that I like I have done the jelly press before jelly pre uh, yeah gel press but I have done these before and not only that but look at this this is where I rolled off the brayer onto the paper 
Now, wouldn't that be nice? You could, this would make a nice Halloween background where you could stamp in black on here. I think that would be awesome. So let me try something else, some other colors. All right, so let me try something not quite so glaring in your face. So let's try um, I don't think that's going to work. Pretty amethyst. Let's try pretty amethyst. One, two, well, let me just do it this way. Rather than measuring drops, I'll just squeeze. I like that you can put a lot of pressure on this when you're squeezing and still only get a drop at a time. So this is going to be an entirely different look. This is bubble gum. We'll do the same thing. Let's still beating up. I may have to use it a few more times. I think if I had started with acrylic paint, it would have worked well, but I think all I did was blend that color doing it that much. I did, I blended it, which is not what I wanted to do, but because it's beating up, let me just add some more and see if I can't get this color not so mixed. I was not thinking when I was doing that. Although that's a pretty color, it's a pretty mauve color. So I'm going to do that, and this time I'm going to do, like I said before, I'm going to do the bounce, which will roll it out, but yet it won't blend it together. It's a shame it's still beating up, and I will put that on here. So you don't ever lose your ink. These are from the two roll-offs that I did on my brayer. So I'll keep that. And unfortunately, it did beat up on me, so let me, let me try using a stamp and see if that works any better. I'm gonna use this new stamp, the uh, Flower Swirls which comes out July 1, just like the gel press. And let me, I'll use the big one just to show you what I'm doing. I actually need the bigger block. So I'm going to take this and press onto my jelly, my gel press, and then I'm going to stamp it off onto a piece of paper. And I'll do it again. And I'll do a partial one here. I'm thinking backgrounds. You can stamp and then stamp off. So we're actually stamping an image on the gel press and also stamping an image onto the paper. Now, I really didn't do a very good job of stamping in the right place, but let's see what that looks like 
because I do have a glob of paint there. But let's just put this down and see what we get. But you can see why I didn't want to waste cardstock because you just don't know what you're going to get right now. And because this was so watery, it may not work. But we'll see. No, not too much. You can see it in the background. Look at that. That's kind of cool. And you can see the little roses in the background. You just can't tell what they are, but you can see some swirls. So I'm going to hang on to this, and I'm going to do something else with it. And I'm going to also pull up what's left on my gel press. And as you can see, it's I've got ink all over me. It's, it's a messy craft. Let's just see what shows up on this paper. Now this is called a ghost print, being the last of the ink, except for along this edge. And I'm going to just stick this on the edge just to get that ink up. But these ghost prints are really good if you're doing a card and you're using these colors. Um, you could use this because this ink, I know you can't see it, but this ink is so faint on here, but it is there. If you did a card using this, maybe as a background, then you could maybe use this for your sentiment because this has enough of the color on it that it will coordinate with the what you stamped off. Does that make sense? I'm going to put that aside, and I'm going to try some Catalina Splash, and I'm just going to use just the Catalina Splash. Before I do that, let me get another stencil out. I should have wiped this stencil off, and I didn't. Thank goodness this is water-soluble. It'll come off with a damp paper towel. Oh, and I'm getting some really cool stuff over here on my roses. Look what I got on my roses. Again, I'm thinking background really looking promising but the thing I like about this is you can layer so I've used my hearts let me try a printed stencil this one is our artful wall and this is going to be interesting can you see this one see all the little things on it. So we're going to use that. I'm going to use the Catalina Splash. No, not, that's not it. This is the Catalina Splash. And I'm just going to use Catalina Splash. And I'm going to do my little bounce method so it'll get different colors I mean, it's all Catalina Splash but you'll see some of it will be a little bit darker than others you can go in a different direction I think I kind of messed up some of my dots that way and I will roll this off And there's enough for two more backgrounds. And 
And what I'm going to do is I'm going to place this decorative stencil on here. And then I'm going to put a piece of paper over that. I love that this is the same size as the paper. And I'm going to pull this up. And see that? This is the first print. And again, we're going to have several prints on this one. I'm going to pull up the stencil and put the stencil down on this piece of paper. which I'm not sure you can see, but I can't see my phone. So I apologize if you're asking me questions, but I can't see my phone the way I've got it set up. But look at this. Now think of these, you can think of them as a background, or you can think of them as a beginning of another design, and I'm going to show you what I mean. Because remember this one? that was just a bunch of splotches, even though it's got the little roses in the middle. I'm gonna use that to pick up what's left on my gel press. This is where it gets to be fun. It may not work. If it doesn't, I apologize. But you don't know till you try. And look at that. Totally changed it, didn't it? So I've gone from a page full of orange splotches to something with some blue and a design on it on top of the orange splotches. So that's always fun. And there should be a ghost print. Well, my paper got stuck sideways, but that's all right. I'll still use it. You've got to be careful when you lay your paper down because this gel press just grabs your paper. And again, I have a nice, very light ghost print that I could use for a sentiment on anything that I use Catalina Splash on. So this one still has some ink on it, but it's probably dry by now. Let me lay it on this paper and just see. That's just very little. Now it won't be so hard to wipe off. So let me go back to my rose. Well, actually, I need something that has some kind of dimension to it. So let me do this other rose. I do want to show you a trick. And actually, I probably ought to use ink instead of this, but I'm going to try it anyway. The worst that can happen is that it won't work, right? So, my stamp blocks. One of the problems that we've always had in rubber stamping is being able to do a mirror image. And I want to show you how you can do a mirror image using your stamps and a gel press. Um, let's see, how am I going to do this with, I really be better do this with ink. Hold on just a minute while I get my ink. So 
Sorry about that. I do apologize. But I want to show you this mirror image. And I don't think it will work with this liquid color. Or at least I haven't figured out how it works with the liquid color yet. Let me... But I am going to take this wonderful rose from our embroidered rose stamp set. This also comes out July 1st. And you can, of course, it has a die set with it. I bought the die set. But see, can you see the lines that are in the roses that makes it look like embroidery? All the leaves, all the stamps in this, in this set and in the other, in the whole collection are made to look like embroidery. So let me show you this. Just want to make sure this is candy apple. And I'm going to stamp this onto the gel press. All right. It's just stamped on the gel press. And I'm going to take my paper and I'm going to pull that print up. Isn't that a beautiful rose? I wish I could find my acrylic sheet that came off of this so I could lay something on top of it. I'll just lay this down and I'll just have to peel it up. So then I'm going to ink up my rose again. And this time I'm going to stamp direct to paper. And look at that. You've got a mirror image. Of course, I'll have to peel this up because you can see how it sticks to the paper. But there's your mirror image. Isn't that awesome? So I had the, uh, I used the hummingbird the other day and that turned out really good. But this is just something you can do, you know, let me do this. Let me show you what I was trying to show you with the other. Actually, I will use that other one. Let me just wipe it off. And I'm going to use, actually I'm going to put the ink directly on here. I'm going to do it that way. I'm going to take this candy apple and put it directly on my gel press. I need to keep some place clean so I can get a good juicy layer of candy apple on here. Isn't that a pretty red? So this is just showing you, you can use your ink pads. Now you can see on here that there's some little marks from where the stamp pad was. Here comes the trusty old brayer. Just brayer over it and it gets rid of all of those ink pad marks. And I'm going to just use this here with the roses on it. Roll off my brayer. And here I'm going to take back to my, to the swirl rose. I'm going to do this a little bit better this time. I'm going to stamp there. And then I'm going to stamp on my paper. 
And then I'll stamp here. I'm going to try to line these up a little better. And you just stamp onto your paper and then back to your gel press and just keep doing this till you've done the whole sheet. And you can use, matter of fact, I might do this. I'm going to just stamp the big one. Okay, now I think I'll take one of the littler ones, so that goes on here, and the other stamp set is under my paper somewhere, there it is, I'm going to take one of these little, actually I think I'll do the leaves, let me just take one of these leaves. And I'm going to pull the leaf off. I'm going to put the leaves in between. And I hit the gel press with my stamp block, which is going to leave a mark. There is a way to fix it because I did it the other day, but I don't remember what it was. <laughs> Just, you know, fill in some of these little spaces. And I think this will be the last technique I'll do for today because I'm not sure how long they will let me do a live. Anyway, so here's the one that I stamped off on. And I'm going to put this down. Try to line it up as best I can. And I'm going to roll it with my brayer. And roll it off on one of these papers. And let's see what we've got. And there was a little bit of the blue still left on there, but look at that. But see where I hit it with my stamp pad? And isn't that pretty? So this is another background. And again, you can stencil over top of this if you want to with a different color. And I'm going to also pull the ghost print because there's a lot of ink still left on my gel press. Didn't get all of it up. Matter of fact, I can't even see the ghost on this one, so I, I must have gotten most of it. But anyway, that will be the end of this tutorial and my initial try at going live on Facebook. So hope you enjoyed it, and I will be back again soon. Bye-bye.